Hey, uh, this week we're looking at um, our second week in the I Am Loving portion of our series. We're looking at what we're calling our five I Ms. They're all aspects, nuances to our spiritual identity. The world wants to define us one way, but God wants to define us a completely different way. Last month we started this venture kind of talking about our vision statement, that we are a loving community of growing disciples, you got it, mentoring the next generation to live the mission of Jesus through the power of the gospel. <laughs> and from that vision statement of who we are corporately, we look at individual statements. Um, so the gospel tells us that I am loved. So then I am a growing, I'm a loving disciple. That's the uh, kind of the loving piece of that is critical. Um, because I am loved, I am loving. That's what we're focusing on today, this week, this month. And our statement to go with that is a great statement. It uh, really touches on something that is a massive nemesis to our spiritual well-being. Distractions. Distractions. There are so many distractions that pull us away from being like Christ. So our statement goes like this. It's easy. I hope you're committed to memory already. If not, please do. I will work to eliminate whatever distractions are in my life and schedule that interfere with me living and loving like Jesus. That is that is the big idea. The big idea is that we're supposed to live and love like Jesus. And so we're in 1 Corinthians 13. That's the passage. The latter part of that little statement says, I will memorize and meditate on 1 Corinthians 13 to help me stay focused on this goal. Focused on the right goal. That's, that is so critical. And whenever we have distractions, we're not focused on the right goal. So we want to eliminate those distractions. You might say, well, what's the goal, pastor? The goal is simply to be loving, to be like Jesus. So this last week we talked all about being like Christ. And that 1 Corinthians 13, when the Apostle Paul gives us the definition of love from verses 4 through verse 8, the love that he describes is not a love you and I can attain because it's the love of God. Only the love of God is always patient, always kind, uh, does not envy, does not boast, is not proud, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not easily angered, does not keep any record of wrongs, does not delight in evil. Um, rejoice in the truth, always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, never fails, never fails. You and I will always fail to one degree or another. But this lofty definition of love that he gives us in 1 Corinthians 13 is our goal. And it has eight, I call them attractions, things that are attractive about love, being patient and kind, being the pillars of love. And then the eight things that are detractions or distractions to love. And so love is as much aware of what it should look like as it is what it shouldn't look like. It's as much aware of what it shouldn't look like as what it should look like. And so we're talking about that. How do I eliminate those distractions? I cannot do that. I cannot eliminate my distractions if I'm not self-aware. So the principle that we're talking about uh, today and, and this whole week is, is you cannot eliminate a distraction you're unwilling to acknowledge. Pretty simple. You're, you're, not, you're not able to eliminate a distraction that you're unwilling to acknowledge. And so we spent this whole last Sunday kind of talking about 1 Corinthians 13 and kind of acknowledging the level of distraction in our lives. And so that requires this increased sense of self-awareness. That means I've got to be able to watch myself. Have you ever kind of had this almost out of body, out of body experience where you're kind of like, I was watching myself? Um, that's not that's not dissociative, which could be a bad thing. Um, that can be helpful to kind of say, wow, I, 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 I kind of stepped away from that experience and I just was aware that I said something totally inappropriate, that I did something totally inappropriate, that I behaved in a way that was just not edifying. It didn't build anybody up. It wasn't God honoring. When that happens, when you're starting to catch those things, that's a sign of being self-aware. Now, what you do with that is either spiritual or unspiritual. Unspiritual is you beat yourself up for it. Or you say, everybody behaves that way. Everybody's a jerk sometime. You just kind of rationalize why it's no big deal. But to be 
healthy is you pay attention, you're aware, you're self-aware. When that happens, now I can begin to kind of evaluate my behavior and begin to bring it to God and, and invite him to change me. And so as we do that, I want to encourage you, this information, this idea of being self-aware is, I call it the, the key to spiritual growth. You will not grow spiritually if you're not self-aware. When we meet Jesus, we are God aware. That starts our spiritual journey. But to continue the journey and to successfully move in the right direction, you've got to add the self-awareness piece. Let's continue to talk about that. I want to invite you just to begin to ask God, Lord, make me more self-aware. Jesus, help me recognize my behavior when it's out of sync. The Bible calls this being out of step with the Spirit. When I'm out of step with you, when I can recognize that I'm out of step, the beautiful thing is I can much more quickly and effectively get back in step. Lord Jesus, help us to be in step with you. Lord, at a moment's notice, Lord, we could recognize when we're out of step. Lord Jesus, increase our self-awareness that we would know when we are as like a, a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal because our words are motivated out of something besides love. That we would know that we are in search of knowledge and knowing stuff and when it's not in sync with knowing you. That we would know that no matter what we give, if it's given from the wrong motivation, we're not accomplishing the love you've called us to. God, build our self-awareness. We are here. We are ready. In Jesus' name. Look forward to seeing you the rest of this week and thinking about Easter. Invite someone. We're going to have a great time. Love you. God bless.